In this next tutorial, we're going to take a look at material creation. The materials that we bring in from Rhino 3D are a pretty good approximation of what we see there. And V-Ray even has some techniques where you're able to save an entire V-Ray scene and using V-Ray for Unreal, import that V-Ray scene with all of the materials directly in. Uh, they're baked and textured exactly as you, how you would expect. But I also want to look at the way we create materials within Unreal Engine um, in hopes that we can make photo real and amazing materials here in Unreal that we can use again and again. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use this template file that I'm using that contains kind of master materials. Let's jump in first with the master material solid and talk about the workflow there. This material is a solid opaque surface material. It's set to be a default lit material and this kind of aggregates all of the pieces. This technique and this kind of system that's created here was something that was a tutorial online from Quixel. Uh, Quixel makes uh, Megascans, which is a great, let's pull that up real quick, um, is a fantastic resource of lots of different texture data and 3D assets over here. This is the, the Quixel bridge. So I can go in and look for uh, lots of different materials, but instead of creating a custom material for each one of these, uh, we're going to generate a master material that we can modify. And so what we see here in the material is that we have a lot of different parameters, some of which are grayed out at this time because we wouldn't use it for a solid material. We wouldn't use an opacity mask here on a solid material. And what set up following the Quixel tutorial is a way to import all of the maps. So the albedo is the way the object looks, but by using a brightness parameter and a multiplier, we can actually control the brightness uh, without editing that JPEG resource. So let's talk through a few commands here. This is just a, a texture sampler. So if I press and hold T and left click, I'll get the texture sampler. The harder way to do that is to right click, type texture, and there we go. I can pull the texture sampler. As I generate materials, there are endless possibilities of nodes that I can use. These are using some very simple ones. So the texture sampler is one. This is a parameter node. There's a few ways to do that. Because this is a single variable, I can hit one and left click. This is a single vector parameter. It's just one digit. Let's say I could make it anything from 10, negative 50, whatever I wanted it to be. I can do the same thing with a two vector, holding down three for a three vector, holding down four and left clicking for a four vector. These just give us increased complications. We can add more data here. Any one of these things, I can right click and convert to a parameter. Then I can name it. Uh, this is the level. And I can later edit this level. It's a parameter. So without coming back into this material, I can just change the, the level variable. I'll delete that because we won't be needing it. This one here is a parameter that controls the brightness. The specular amount here is kind of a, a little bit. It says uh, use the specularity on a non metallic surface. Um, so here, this parameter is set up for us. Uh, it's currently, its default is 0.1, uh, but we multiply our, our base albedo, and that becomes the, the specular amount. Uh, a cavity is sometimes used to, to show added depth, and this we could use an ambient occlusion. Uh, we use a power operation here, so if I take power, it's just a math power, and I can multiply, or use the exponent here of uh, cavity power, multiply that over our albedo to change the way things look one more time. So this would add some additional depth and shadow. Our roughness map that we would be able to download or use would go in here. A roughness parameter is created and those are multiplied together to control the roughness of a material. A displacement is how uh, an object moves in uh, three dimensions. So we're moving away a portion of the geometry. And again, I have a control for the displacement amount. Here, in my master material, when this is selected, to use displacement, I need to scroll down. I'm using currently flat tessellation, and I'm using adaptive tessellation. I'm not using crack-free displacement. So if, uh, if a, say, a, a cube is being displaced, little by little, the edges of those cubes will separate and will see into the cube. Uh, using crack-free displacement can combat that, but my suggestion is just not to displace anything too, too drastically. This displacement amount controls how much it does. The last one is the normal. The normal is a way of defining uh, which way is normal to the surface, kind of a perpendicular to that surface. And as Quixel suggested, and it works very well, 
we actually use the red and green channels multiplied by a new parameter called normal amount. We append those so they're back into one kind of pipeline, and then we append the blue normal so that we're able to control a little bit more uh, in a nuanced way the depth of an object. All of that stuff combined becomes just a solid material. I'll close that. I won't save any of my changes. So now with my master material solid, if I right click and create a material instance, I can create, say, a brick material. The brick material I can then open brings this uh, window forward. I'm going to resize it so we can get to some textures. And in the textures folder, I have a few different things. This is for the glass that we'll look at in a second. We'll do uh, some brick and I'll turn on all of these samplers in the material. I can then click my, let's see, here we go. Diffuse material would be my albedo. Uh, I would go to my cavity and import that. My displacement and import this. My glossiness, if I had a specular, I could put that in. I won't, I'll just put in my normal and my roughness here. So here what you see is I've created a brick material from my master material and it lets me have options. See, I can control the brightness by turning this on and adding greater brightness or darkness to the brick. The cavity power, I could increase the shadows and contrast within the brick. Uh, let's say the normal amount, I could add increased normal and if I can zoom in on the brick we might be able to see some slight changes. This normal amount is really changing. Uh, well, it, the exposure just there so it's hard to tell um, but we can you can see a little bit more of the graininess to the brick as I increase that uh, specular amount here I can or sorry roughness amount I can make the thing rougher or smoother a smoother object would have more gloss which we begin to see right around here and if I get the right angle on it you can see that it does have uh, some glossiness to the brick uh, I'm going to set this back to 1.5 so here I'm able to just use my master material to create a brick material. Um, so we'll save that and we'll come back to the content and look at our other master materials. Here um, under the solid, let's see, we can use the master material metal. We just use the solid. The metal one has a few other parameters, so let's call this zinc. And double click the zinc material. Again, I'm going to turn on diffuse, normal, roughness, and specular. And coming to my textures material, I'll pull up my zinc. And by clicking the diffuse map, I can actually click and drag it here. The normal map, I can put it here. The roughness and let's, the specular, just like this. And I'm able to create a, uh, a metal here. Uh, if I increase the roughness, let's see, roughness amount, it becomes less glossy and shiny. Uh, I can also change the metalness of the object and kind of ch change a lot of the characteristics of it. So I can save the zinc. Coming back to the content, I've always struggled with glass, and I finally was able to find a really gla a good glass material um, that was by Michael Zellick. Uh, let's pull up his website real quick. Here we go. Uh, or Zellick. Um, and you can go to this website and learn a little bit more. Uh, there's some really good resources here. Uh, and I included this master material, which is just the master glass. You can see it's a much more complex definition. This controls a dirt map and a normal map. Um, but for our purposes, we're able just to just right click, create a material instance, and call this glass. We can then look at this material. And there's some opportunities to come in here and manipulate the glass. Let's see, there's the cube there. I could play with its opacity and make it darker. I could play with its reflection, refraction. I can even change some of the, the color of the glass. Let's see, make it more purple in hue. Um, up here there's some dirt maps and occlusions that we can play with and I believe the masks here we can try to work on. I haven't explored with this too too much um, but it's a good baseline glass. There's the zinc. The last one I'll look at here, let's get rid of this one, let's see the master. I would want to keep these in a separate folder so let's go ahead and just move them out to content for now. Move here. The zinc I'll move to my content folder. Um, and here the master translucent material. Again, this is another Quixel tutorial. It's the exact same setup except here we're using a masked material and two-sided foliage. Uh, what that lets us do is use one of the properties here, which is subsurface color. So you could imagine if we were using uh, a leaf or grass, uh, we want to be able to almost see through that. 
Uh, in all of these master materials, um, this file that you can download only contains these simple grays. Uh, the glass materials uh, I'm allowed to ship with the, the textures. That's a Creative Commons license. Um, but the materials I'm creating here with brick and zinc are, are files that I've downloaded for my use. Uh, you can come in and import your own. In the next tutorial, I want to show you a way of creating textures that you can use on your own uh, using either Quixel Megascans or generating them off of images, and that's next.